My name is Ronson, welcome back to Slay the Spine. We're going to be playing Defect for an Ascension 15 because today's daily. <laughs> oh, you best believe it's garbage. I, uh, I attempted it through until like maybe floor 10 and then I just gave up. I was <laughs> just like, no, I'm actually not into this daily. Peace the heck out at that point. Okay, there's, there's a possibility of taking out a couple of elites with this one. Baby, you know I want that. Plus, it's a nice path. It's a scenic route to take on the way past them. I'll take the first ball lightning is extra damage. Not guaranteed to be a shop anytime soon. I'll take that. <laughs> Damn you, game. Uh, Clockwork Symphony and started to combat with one artifact. That could help us actually get a biased cognition without any downside. Also, self-repair is good, but Clockwork Souvenir can be really good on the defect. No attack, no attack, no attack. Whoa! Eternal Feather for every five cards... Uh, ah. For every five cards in your deck, start each combat with... Sorry! I'm reading the wrong relic. For every five cards in your deck, heal three HP whenever you enter a rest site. There we go. I'm playing so many roguelikes at the moment that I'm reading the wrong descriptions in the wrong game. Molten Egg, whenever you add an attack card to your deck, upgraded, as well as a Sweeping Beam pre-upgraded. Yeah, I'll take that. No, no fight, no fight, no fight. <gasps> Baby? Ooh, a pre-upgraded Sunder? Yes. <laughs> Baby. And then I can get the second Elite for free as well. <laughs> this all worked out pretty excellently for me. What a great first floor. Pantograph at the start of the boss combat's heal for 25 HP. Take my free log of all in here also. Pennib, every 10th attack you play deals double damage as well as rebound and thunderstrike. <gasps> Do I? Can I? I wanna. Let's try and make this a thunderstrike build. Uh, single ball lightning isn't enough. We're gonna get more ball lightnings. It's gonna be good. Compile driver, beam cell, white noise. Compile driver is a little bit of draw for this deck. Beam cell is a lot of extra damage when it's pre upgraded, and we have a Sunder and a Thunderclap in the deck. Thunderclaps, th Thunderstrike, sorry. Got him. Capacitor, gain two orb slots. Love it. I'd like to retain more of them at the same time. I'll take the hit for that. I know what I do here. It's Sunder. We return the Sunder for zero cost. Use it. It regenerates our energy. We double defend and then attack the frontliner. Now each turn we only need to defend for 10. That's a lot more achievable. Hey, we did manage to hit the front line in two times there. That was the only way I was going to save myself from taking damage. Pretty sure we got that one too. Baby, what a good first floor. Akebeko, your first attack each combat does eight additional damage. Skim, white noise, recycle. Recycle, we do have a lot of expensive cards in this deck. Skim, white noise. Honestly, it's probably none of these. Don't necessarily really want any of them. I'm gonna upgrade the ball lightning because because I have the lightning strike in the deck. I'm gonna wanna up. I'm gonna wanna have the ball lightning be very powerful because I'm always gonna wanna play the ball lightning when I draw it. Strike, fine. I can also line up the pendant with a sunder. If I lined it up with a Sunder, I actually killed it. Like, ugh. I need Strike. Uh, I can't get Strike and Sunder in the next turn and play both. So if I do 9 damage with this and then these do 6 damage, that's 15 damage done to the enemy. They'll split. I can't split them like that. Alright, get me another Sunder, please. 
I'll take a ball lightning. In a pinch, a ball lightning will do. If you haven't got store bought, homemade is fine. Uh, except the other way around. Alright, got him. Hyper Beam. The first time we play that, we won't get any loss from it from the Clockwork Souvenir. And it's a great, great card for the next floor. Inserter. Every two turns gain an additional energy slot. Velvet Choker and the Astrolabe. We may take the Velvet Choker here. We don't play that many cards in a turn. Definitely not six. And the extra energy is very important when you've got a Hyper Beam, a uh, Thunder Strike, and uh, Sunder in your deck. So this path has a lot of question marks. Like, doubling, obviously, the effect of the Necromicon is fine. But having question mark, elite, question mark, elite at the very end, that could easily just kill me. still think it's the best path on the floor, but I don't like that I like... I don't like that I think it's the best path on the... Uh, best path on the floor, rather. Tempest is really good. Sweeping Beam is also really good this floor, though. I'm going to take the Sweeping Beam just because I've taken the, uh, the riskier path, and I think setup is less valuable here for us as a result. Okay, strike the frontliner. Sorry, uh, we did the beam cell on the frontliner to set up for the pen nib. Strike the backliner and then kill the frontliner with the orb. Cold snap, pre upgraded. Yeah, it'd be nice to sprinkle some frost in here occasionally. Upgrade a card, get a capacitor upgrade. Go to a shop, maybe buy a relic. Another sweeping beam. Sweeping beam, doom and gloom. We could branch out of the build that we currently have, actually, with these. You can even consume. We have the capacitor. The thing I'm really missing right now is defense. I don't think I can afford to add more aggressive things until I've removed more of my aggressive things and gotten more defense. I'm okay with her randomizing my costs. Yeah, totally fine by me. Smoke bomb, escape a non-boss combat, receive no rewards. I'm going to take that instead of the Blessing of the Forge. Blessing of the Forge doesn't have that much in our deck to upgrade at this point. Genetic algorithm pre-upgraded. That'll take a while to ramp up, but it'll be really good once it does. That's sweet. Doom and defense. We're going to take a lot of damage in this fight, but as soon as we draw the Hyper Beam, we win. Ouch. After that sentence, you want to draw the Hyper Beam and win. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to do that one. Trying to play as many attacks there as possible so I get the pendant back up. Matroshka, the next to the non-boss chest, you open contain two relics, as well as a cold snap, bullseye, and turbo. Bullseye? Applies three lock on to a target. That only really matters with dark orbs. We'll take another cold snap. I don't think I want more cold snaps. If anything, I want one more ball lightning and just defense. I really want the ritual dagger here though. It's pre-upgraded when it adds into our deck. Can't turn that down. I think I have to probably avoid one of the elites here. Like, just have the smoke bomb and throw it. This fight won't last long enough for us to be able to use that. Because we have to end it earlier than that if we don't want to, you know, lose all of our HP. Charge battery. Just need it. 
I haven't seen many charged batteries, leaps, auto shields, first genetic algorithm was a little ago. I've taken every cold snap I've seen, seen no glaciers. Like, we are very light on defense and not entirely by choice. White Beast statue potions always appear in combat rewards, 51 gold, and the meal ticket whenever you want to a shop heal for 15 HP. I really hope this is a shop. Actually, I really can't even afford that guess. Not a sweeping beam, baby. I can't avoid, uh, I can't, I can't, yeah, I, I have to go here, rest, and then just go up this path. I might be able to take out that elite at least with this rate, so it's better. I hate to change my path halfway through, and I very, very, very seldom do it, but I think the situation warranted. I very clearly took a quite optimistic path at the start there. I'm going to use the cold snap. It's fine. I still take one damage this turn, but I get an extra frost orb out. to attack multiple times there again for the pandem's sake block potion probably not barrage pre-upgraded yeah yeah i end up with a fair few orbs often quite quickly three copies of apparition that is a lot of defense like i think we might need that literally just to be able to live just because i've been starved of defense so far i think i have to take this it's dangerous. I can't thicken up the deck anymore. In fact, at this point, I really want to thin it down. I could have used it that turn or not used that turn. It didn't matter either way. Dang. I'll still heal full before the boss fight here, so I can take that bunch of damage. It's okay. Genetic algorithm increments. Great. Fourteen cards left in the deck. Two apparitions left in there. Happy to see that at least. Nice. It's only when it kills a non-minion enemy that it upgrades, so I can't kill the sneaky gremlin with it. So if I beam sell the backliner... Yeah, I think that's it, actually. Beam sell the backliner. This does double damage. Kills all the frontliners for us. Sure. And then apparition to defend. This ritual dagger really isn't getting upgraded. Uh, calipers at the side of your turn lose 15 block rather than all of it. It's kind of bad news. <laughs> 15 block is more than all of my block. I don't have block. Gotta upgrade these apparitions so they can try and keep them for key turns. It's gonna be real difficult in this fight. Like, just lose that one already. I fear that we die in this fight if we take it, or rather that we did, we, rather that we would die in this fight if we took them, and if, and if we didn't take them, we would also die. So 21 plus both of those is 35. I got a genetic algorithm this turn at least. Let's go. Ball calls. Single defend and then hold the rest, I think. Two will cost that, actually. I'm holding the rest because I'm looking for an AoE card still. Yeah, Hyper Beam will do. 
Will it actually? If I don't play Hyper Beam here, I can. Oh no no no! But the uh, the the collector uses weak first, not vulnerability first or frailty first. So we will still be weak and frail. So yeah, that's Hyper Beam, I guess. Cold Snap for some more defense next turn. This is gonna be rough. Please go for like another turn of debuffs. No, you're going for a turn of buffs. That's great. You don't need to play this apparition. I don't want to draw with the sweeping beam just in case I draw the other apparition. And letting a dark, uh, a dark orb gestate for a while seems like a better way of killing me. No. We need to go for direct damage to get the kill. Next card wouldn't have been the apparition though, so oh well. Okay. So four damage reach channeled orb is four by five twenty. Twenty plus twenty-four. I can kill the backliner here. Getting my energy back. Then cold snap defend, I guess. Double damage again this turn with the backliner dealing a bunch. I, I don't really have any choice here except a sweeping beam and hope that I draw an apparition. <laughs> Hello, apparition. Okay. Hopefully you don't attack two turns in a row. No, you're not. Good. Leaving hyper beam in the deck because you're about to do the summon is actually really good here. But also, if I draw it and play it, it's really good. That's fine. Without those apparitions, I don't think I could have survived that fight. Deep potion. Dupe potion, dupe potion. Uh, dupe potion on apparition is an extra turn of defense, better than smoke bomb. There's bias cognition, an awful one. I think we take the bias cognition. It could provide everything that I'm missing right now. Runic pyramid. At the end of your turn, you no longer discard your hand. Yes. That plus upgraded apparitions could actually help keep us alive here. We might be able to still win this. I think I have to take a very safe path this floor though. So I'm gonna start out with this. Sweep him. Can't just doom him, can I? No, because genetic algorithm has to be played this turn, so it's genetic algorithm that, and then hold snap. Let's go heavy on the defense. Doom and Gloom, and then I can Sunder this target. Sweeping Beam, strike this target, and then I actually get a Ritual Dagger off. Great. Essence of Steel, no. Glacier, yes. Upgrade a card in our deck, or obtain a special relic and get the pain. I... Upgrading a card in a hand every single turn, especially because I retain all my hands. Like, not many of these cards need to be upgraded, though. Uh, no, not many of them need to be upgraded. Just the apparitions at this point and the bias cognition, obviously, but apparitions first. Sweep those beams. Okay. Cold snap, cold snap, dual cast on that. Go for double defense, single defense. No, single defense here, it's fine. 
I'll play the genetic algorithm because basically next turn I'm just going to be defending constantly until I find... Yeah. This will do. Just going to be defending constantly until I find the uh, ritual dagger. Got to use that for the kill here. Okay, got an apparition that'll still save me this turn. Unfortunately, I only have three cards left in hand. I can get that strike out at least. Can't play any of the rest of these. They'll kill the enemy. Really? You're not going to give me this ritual dagger? Like, seriously, you're not going to? I can't take that damage for it. Regen potion as well as a charged battery. I think I have to take the charged battery here as well. This is a tail. Whenever you die, heal to 50% of your max HP works once and then defragment. We're a lot safer now. I still think we just sa play it safe and go to the final boss though. They ramp very quickly. Thunderstrike was a bad pickup. I always want to make a Thunderstrike wor uh, deck work. But I just don't know if it has a place in like high ascension decks. At least my high ascension decks. It can have a place in our deck, sure. But like, like it's more general value thing. I don't think I can find much. It seems like you have to go like all lightning or nothing. And if you're going all lightning or nothing, you know, don't be Ascension 15, please. That's a rough time, it sounds like. I don't think I can take this. This already does 32 damage by itself. That's dual cost. Okay. So that gives me the ability to kill that one by myself easily. Sunder to kill that, and then cold snap the back line. Just give myself some defense this turn. Three lightning. So unless I hit the front line of three times here, I'm not taking damage. Cool. Let's go biased cognition into... Apparition Algorithm Sweep. Alright, fine. Again, no Ritual Dagger for me. I still think Speed Potion is going to be necessary to save me on a certain turn. Overclock, draw three cards out of burn to your hand? Probably not. Probably none of those, in fact. Next upgrade is Apparition, then Defragment and Bias Cognition. The only problem is if I sunder the enemy here, they could easily just turn around and kill me. They could change their intent to something that will actually murder me. I think I have to defend maybe Ritual Dagger and then just pass. That's become... <sighs> Ryan, it wasn't you couldn't play Sunder, it was you couldn't play an attack. Sorry. Momentary brain fart. Yeah, because I still have the ability to play an aberration. That's fine. Let's go for ball lightning. Sweep that beam. Double apparition is good enough for me there. Sure, I take three damage, but the enemy, the enemy takes more. Speed potion as well as white noise chaos stack. Probably none. I got to take the safe option here again. Ah, that's the latest shop. I want more question marks. I'll go ahead and this safe option. That's fine. Quetstone upon pick up upgrade to random attacks. There's only really strikes in the deck left to be upgraded because we got the molten egg so early. Toy Ornithopter whenever you use a potion heal for five HP. I'm not going to the heart for this build, and the Toy Ornithopter can actually heal me up at important times. So I'm going to take that. 
lose the max HP here to max HP. Lose six max HP to heal to full. We'll heal to full when we get to the rest side anyway. What an optimistic thing to say. That we're going to get to the next rest site, that is. Evidently a chicken I should not count before it hatches. 17 plus 32 isn't enough to kill a target. I think I might have to dupe potion this turn. I've also had a white bee statue this whole time. I mean, I have been comparing them against the ones we have, but I should have been using them more commonly there, definitely. Okay. <gasps> Never mind, we were God. gave ammunition to the people who are like you can't ever take a velvet choker almost but never mind it was fine so nothing happened auto shields is great there defrag the final position will upgrade the bias cognition okay this fight's gonna be a bit rough So cognition. Go for that for 21 damage. Block myself for 6. Well, actually, hang on. This evokes for 12. So 21, 12. Uh, is 33. The enemies in... Yeah, actually. That's fine. We'll do those. And then I keep my apparition. I don't take any damage. Hyper Beam will keep the final turn. The enemies on the field. Cold Snap to cycle those orbs. Gets me some defense as well. These block for five, these block for nine, effectively. You want to think about it in that way. And I pray that you do. All right. Apparition, apparition, charge battery, strike. It's fine. Two apparitions means I can no longer uh, lose this fight. And we set ourselves to the next pen nib. Power potion. Yeah, it depends on the power that we get from it, but it could actually be better than what it is. It's probably better than the strength potion. Yeah, yeah. Rip and tear, streamline claw. No, thank you. Final upgrade goes on bias cognition. All right, let's see how this final fight goes. There's a double damage hyper beam to open the fight, which is good. Electrodynamics, echo form. I'll take the echo form. I'm gonna use the speed potion to keep my decks. I really didn't want to do that. Because I have the other stuff in the deck that will really benefit, but. And now I can't play the hyper beam. Like, I'm just locked out of being able to do that for a while at least. Because I need the lightning orbs power. But keeping that decks will keep us around in the fight for a lot longer. I think I needed to. Double up on capacitor. I think it's about time to start snapping. Now's about the time I really wish I had to consume. I can double play these apparitions as per my echo form. I do have to remember I have echo form. The first turn after I play echo form, I always forget that I have echo form. Double Bias Cognition will kill me in this fight. Double Glacier is huge, though. Okay. 
single genetic algorithm's enough here, right? 27 plus 12, 27, 12, 39. Incoming damage is 36. Yeah, we're fine. So we look to double something else important. Maybe it's the ritual dagger just for the 20 damage two times. It could be apparition and then keep the genetic algorithm for a later turn, actually. Okay. Double up this turn would be like double up on Sweeping Beam, but Sweeping Beam can't even draw two cards this turn. Fine. Defrag. Alright, I'm just going to ritual the back line. Take my turn off. I'm shorting myself on a lot of this draw now, though. Double the charge battery there. Still enough block this turn. Ball lightning. Been looking for that ball lightning for a while, as well as my other zap as soon as I get it. I actually am going to double zap there. 24 times 2 is 48. 48. Uh, I've got 6 of those. 6 times 4 is 24. 24, 34, 48. Uh, I take 14 damage this turn. Only when I'm under pressure can I do maths. Clearly. That plus a sweeping beam. I'll doom and gloom. Cycling one of them out, so I'm not even going to take that much damage anymore. Sweeping beam again. Good. I think it's double apparition. Oh, it could just be double glacier. That's yeah, double glacier is enough defense for a system. One, two, three. Cool. Backline is dead this turn. Great. So now double casting Thunderstrike. I want to do that. No, I'm gonna dual cast bias ignition. Then Thunderstrike. Then. Dual cast. Next turn, I. Th sorry, next turn, I Thunderstrike doubled. We made Thunderstrike do a thing! <laughs> oh, and we still had the Listen Tail. Alright, I thought that run was actually doomed on the second floor, but then. As soon as we got the Apparition, we started getting all of the defensive things. Big, big props to the Runic Pyramid for actually providing us enough, def uh, sorry, uh, enough flexibility in our turns by providing all of the cards we didn't play on previous turns. Incredible. Huge, huge plus to that run. Probably a huge amount of the reason we won, or at the very least that we didn't need to use Lizard Tail. Uh, on top of that as well... What else? What else? Obviously, getting the Echo Form from a Power Potion is pretty ridiculous. Um, I think we could have won without that, but I still think it's pretty ridiculous. 1490, and... Ooh. Baby. Very quick Ascension 15 victory there with the, uh, with the Ironclad. Yeah, it's the Ironclad in Defect Robot. Defect Robot skin, rather. I, I was just playing with the, the downloadable content that makes the Ironclad look like the Defect and have all the Defect's cards. It's, you know, it's... Just DLC. You know how everyone gives DLC for skins of other characters on characters that is so confusing so as to completely imitate the original character in a way that is completely discernible, uh, indiscernible from the original? No, that's not a thing? Okay, fair enough. Well, my name's been Rhapsody. The name of the game's been Slay This By. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.